What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10s. This is part seven of Billy's Badass Boat Build. Now this 14 foot well built is going to be a sick fishing machine when I get done with it. I mean, this is a tournament rig. This thing is going to be tried and true, put to the test every single weekend. He's gonna win some money out of this thing. So I've got to make sure everything is right. Got to make sure everything's perfect because when it's done, there's no bringing it back. There's no rework. There's no time for that because I'm on to the next project, on to the next build. I can't look back at a past build. Anyways, this thing is really coming together. I mean, I threw all this metal work in here just so you guys can see what it looked like for the last video. But the bottom line is none of this stuff is installed. It's just sitting in here. And I'm gonna have to pull all these hatches out and all these pieces that I put in here because I need to finish all the internals. This rod locker is sick. I mean, it's got a lot of space in there, a lot of room. None of those panels are enclosed in there. One thing I think I am gonna do though, after talking to Billy, he doesn't really want carpet in the boat and I don't blame him. And I have a ton of turf that's left over pieces and remnants and scraps from other jobs so I'm going to turf the entire interior of this rod locker now I'm gonna put whatever I can find up in the front part you're not gonna see in pieces and then when it comes back into the back I'm gonna try to put gray diamond turf I'm gonna put that right here so when you open it you'll see the gray diamond turf up in the front it might be in different pieces might be different colors but who cares nobody's ever going to see it I've still got to figure out all the electronics, the switch panel and a, a cutty for a little storage inside of this hatch on this side over here. I've got to put a floor inside of this back bench seat. I actually did make two pieces today that are gonna install into the floor of this back bench seat. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get those installed right now. And I also have a puck that's gonna go off the back of the transom. That's gonna house his Garmin transducer. He's got a 56 that's gonna go off the back of the boat. And he's also got another 56 and a live scope that's gonna go off the trolling motor. Now he did drop off another Garmin head unit. So he has a 93 SV and a 106 SV. And I think he might even have something else that's going in here yet. But I've got to get all this metal work finished up because I want him to paint the boat. And he's busy and obviously it's Christmas and it's family time and his business is busy. So he's probably not gonna be able to paint this boat until after first of the year. And I understand that. It's probably gonna take me that long to finish all this up. Also I have to hook up the live well. I need to install the floor drain. I'm gonna get that thing staged up to the right height. I'm gonna weld that solid. And then I'm gonna install the foam around that. I got this pink closed cell foam over here. So I'm gonna cut that and get that all installed and wrapped up and try to finish up as much of this metal work and get ready for Billy to paint this thing. Let's get into it. Let's get back to work. All right, so you can see what I did here. This piece on the floor right here, this is two pieces. I took a piece of the 063 aluminum sheets that I have that I'm selling for $20 a piece. They are 36 by 26 inches. Now I cut the 36 in half at 18 inches, and this is my 18 across here. Both these pieces are 26. Now the whole floor of this boat, it's a 1448, so it's 48 inches from either side across. So what I did was just overlap them in the center. And then I came back, and I cut out about three and a half, four inches right here on the lip going vertically on either side. Now I'm going to put a piece of foam underneath the center of this to jack this up so that it's flush and level going all the way across this floor. And then I'm gonna come back and shoot rivets through here to connect these two pieces together. I'm also gonna put rivets in through the side lip and through this front of this bench seat and through the rear of it. Now I would normally make this piece bigger because I only was allowed a 3 8 of an inch lip with an 18 inch piece because this is like 17 and an eight, 17 and 3 16 wide in this back bench seat. Now it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna have to get in here. I'm gonna have to shoot these rivets perfectly. I'm gonna take this piece out and that piece out. I'm gonna pre-drill holes on either side of this so it'd be easier for me to get in there with my drill and my rivet gun. But I gotta get this thing in here and install. And then I'm gonna put his battery tray in the center of that. So I'm gonna get these pieces out of here. I'm gonna pre-drill them the best I can. I'm gonna put them back in the boat and get this thing installed and move on to the next project. Let's get back to work.
All right, so I got the floor installed in here. It turned out really good. Uh, I made it a little difficult with the small lip on the side, but it worked out. I put six rivets across each side, three on each piece on either side, and then three across the middle right here. And it's still got a little gap on these sides right here, but this bench, it tapers in here. Like this side over here on that end was like 17 and an eighth, and all the way over here was like 17 and 5 16 so much. So it's got a little bit of a gap. I might come back and drill some holes in here and shoot a couple more rivets in there. But I mean, the thing is sturdy. It's gonna be perfect for what he needs. And it drops down about a quarter of an inch in the middle on either side, but it's perfectly fine like that. I'm gonna install his tray in here for his iconic batteries right in the center. He's gonna have a ton of room in here. I mean, look at all that space. That is humongous. This is gonna be a ton of space on Port and Starboard in here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get into this puck I'm gonna install on the back of the boat. Let me show you what we got. All right, so I got the floor finished up in there. It looks really good. And now I'm going to move on to the transom. I'm going to weld this puck on here. This is a piece of one by three, one eighth inch thick aluminum rectangular tubing. This is very important because this is going to have a transducer on the transom. And I'm not going to put holes in this boat. The only holes that are going in this boat are for the live weld pumps and stuff like that. So this is definitely gonna come in handy later on down the road. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean this area up right here and I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna weld it just like that on either side. And that is gonna give you the ability to not only mount the transducer that's going on here now, but at a later date, because every year they have the latest and greatest technology, everybody upgrades, I don't care who you are. Eventually, if you own a boat, you're going to upgrade transducers or swap them out at some point in your life. And you are not gonna have to put any new holes in here. These holes are gonna go right into this piece right here, and they don't have to go through the hull. I try to put these on all the aluminum boats I do because it makes life so much better. I mean, if anybody who's ever bought a used boat, you've probably seen on the back of the transom, there's multiple holes in there that have 5200 in them or JB Weld or screws with 5200 in them. This is gonna make sure that never happens. And the greatest part about this, this is a brand new boat. There's no holes in here to worry about and there will never be any holes in here. I'm gonna get this back transom area cleaned up and I'm gonna get this thing welded on here. Let's get back to work. So I got this piece of aluminum rectangular tubing welded onto the back of the transom. Now I'm sure there's a lot of names you can call this thing. I call it a transducer puck. And I try to put these on all of my boats, all of my builds. Even if it's just a partial build or installing a hatch, I will probably put one of these on your boat if you don't have one, just because it's gonna save you a lot of time and hassle in the future if you gotta change out your transducers. Now, you saw me installing this thing. I had a hammer up here and I was jamming up against here and up against my chest while I was welding it. And that's what happens when you work alone. You find out ways to make things happen. You learn tricks of the trades. It's just the nature of the beast. Now this is installed. I'm gonna go get on to something else. Let's get back to work.
All right, so the main drain is welded. It looks good. I made sure I got a lot of penetration on this. I heated it up pretty good. I'm um, pretty happy with it. I think it's going to be sick. I've never had an issue with any of these cracking from up underneath the bottom of the boat. Now this is done. Let's get on to something else. Let's get back All to right, work. So I'm not going to lie. I did want to weld that live well drain in a couple of hours ago, but when I got home from work today, it was thundering and lightning and it was raining like crazy outside. And last time I was up underneath the boat welding in a thunderstorm, my house got struck by lightning. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm scared of lightning, but I definitely have a whole new respect for it. I mean, that was a crazy experience, and I don't think I will ever forget that. But now that that is welded into the bottom, now i got to come back to the top of this live well. I'm going to finish it off up here. I do want to come back and put a couple of one-inch square tubing supports from the floor rib up to the bottom of this frame right here up in the center here because it's only being held by the rivets up front and then the three one inch square tubing in the face of the front of this live well. I'm going to put at least two more in here just to give this thing some extra support. Now it's pretty freaking strong right now. You could probably park a tank on this thing, but I like to do that and make sure that it's not going to flex at all because if it flexes and puts any tension and pressure down on that live well, it's just going to go right on through the live well into the drain on the bottom and I don't want that thing to ever crack on them. So after I get those installed, I still have to get this live well wrapped. I got all the foam for that. So I'm going to try to get the complete live well enclosed in foam. And then I'm going to figure out the holes I got to cut in it for all of the fittings and stuff that's going into it like that. I got to fill. I'm probably going to do an overflow. Um, obviously, I got the recirculate pump that's going in there. So there's at least three holes for that. And then I'm going to put LED lights in there because I like to put LED lights in the boats. So I think they're sick and they're cheap and they look cool. So I'm going to get these clamps out of here and pull this hatch out of here. Let's get back to work. So you can see what I just did here. I welded a one by one over here and another one by one tube over here. And I got up underneath of this thing and welded it from the bottom side and I welded it down here. So this thing is solid. I came back and shot some welds right here along the side of this live well. That's gonna make this thing super strong. I mean, this entire structure of this live well is not going anywhere ever. I don't care what kind of wake you hit or abuse it gets on your trailer. This thing is permanent. That's the whole point of this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to wrap this thing. I'm going to wrap this side. I'm gonna put some LEDs in here too. I might go ahead and drill the holes for those before I wrap it just so it's in there. But I'm gonna wrap this side with some foam. I'm gonna wrap this side. I'm gonna come back on the face of it. And I'm going to put pieces in between these pieces right here, here and here. And that side over there, I'm going to leave it open for now because I got to drill holes through there. That's the side that's going to have all the pumps and, uh, you know, the in and the recirculate and all that stuff coming over there for the aerators. And that's basically just like my day box hatch right there. That's just going to be uh, removable so I can get down to the pumps and stuff in here in case I have to access those at a later date. So let's get this stuff wrapped up in here and let's get on to something else. Let's get back to work. So we got the live well installed and we got it wrapped. I put this one inch closed cell foam on three sides of it. And then I came back and I taped it off with some HVAC tape. Now a lot of you guys are probably like, what in the world is he doing? Why is he using HVAC tape? Well, think about it. What is HVAC tape made for? I mean, literally go look in your attic right now 
and you'll see tons of this stuff in there. It's made for heating and cooling. This tape is exactly what you need. I mean, it's perfect for what we're doing. It's sturdy, it's strong as crap. You can't even cut through it with your nail. Like, it will hold up. It's basically like aluminum foil, and this stuff is made to stick to insulation, and on top of that, it's made to keep the hot or cool in. So this is gonna help insulate this live well. This thing is gonna stay cold. It's gonna keep your fish alive. I have not lost a fish in any of the live wells that I've ever built, and this is how I do them. So take it for what it's worth. But it works for me. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna wrap this entire side. I'm gonna come back with another strip and a strip and a strip. I'm gonna cover this whole thing with it. And I'm gonna come back and cut holes in here too for the live well lights. I couldn't find them. I thought Billy brought me some. Um, I don't know where they're at. If he did, then I'm gonna have to find them. But if not, I'm just gonna order some. But it's gonna be simple, because I'm just gonna come back on the inside. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole here and there. I'm gonna put two in here. I'm gonna put some green ones in here. And then on the back side, after the pilot hole comes through the foam, I'll just come back and cut it out with a razor knife. You know, just like a little square or circle. That way I can get in there and tighten them up and put some sealing on them and make sure they're waterproof. I'll just run the electrical wires back over to that side and up through the side to the electrical panel. This thing is going to be sick. I started shoving some foam up underneath here. I'm going to put foam, I'm going to stack some more in here. I'm going to run all foam underneath here and here and up in these side panels up here between these ribs. This is basically just going to be for sound dampening, but I got a ton of foam and it works out really good. It just fills the void and fills the space up. And then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with this area right here because I'm probably going to end up putting some type of false floor in here or something. So this is going to be his big storage compartment for all of his lures. Now he's got some boxes that he puts inside of here and he told me that he needs to be able to put like at least eight boxes in here. So I'm gonna build some type of aluminum pan that's gonna have dividers in it so he can stack these six cents boxes inside of here. And it's gonna be a humongous storage for all of his lures. And it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be right up here in the front deck. He's got all his lures right here, live wells right here. He's got a little day box over there. And he's gonna have everything he needs right here on the front deck, where he's gonna spend 95% of his time fishing in the tournament. Now, if you guys are wondering what I'm listening to tonight, I'm listening to Nas, King's Disease 3. Now this dude, Nas, is a beast. He has dropped three albums in the past three years, and he's damn near 50 years old. I mean, he might be 50, I'm not sure, but I grew up listening to Nas, and this dude is one of the most lyrical MCs of all time. If you don't know who Nas is, you need to go do your homework. Check him out. Go listen to his old stuff before you get into this. But even as an OG, he's still killing it. Anyways, let's get back to the boat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some measurements over here because I got to figure out this electrical panel. I'm going to build a pan on one side and a little storage apartment on the back side inside of this hatch right here. Hopefully wrap up the rest of this metal work in here. I need to get this boat painted. Let's get back to work. Alright guys, so I finally got one of these Milwaukee M12 rivet guns and this thing is badass. Let me tell you, I have never had a problem using the old school rivet guns and I got humongous hands and I can pop those things with no problem. But this thing is definitely going to come in handy, especially in those tight, hard to reach spots. It's just sick. I'm going to show you this. I got this whole hatch set up here. Went ahead and drilled all the holes and set all the rivets up here. I'm going to come back and pop a few of them just so you guys can see how easy this thing works. Thank you. 
It's so cool. Everyone is exactly the same. They're all perfect. So you see what we got here. This is an electrical panel hatch and a little storage part. Now this thing is going to have all the electrical switches and stuff inside of here. Now this is very similar to the King Neptune build. This is just gonna be a storage department over here. I welded this thing in solid. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna run like a strip, maybe like two and a half, three inches tall across here. I'm gonna weld that in place. And the whole hatch is getting painted and it's gonna be turfed inside of it. That way you can put his phone or GoPros inside of here. And I'm also going to have like a charging port right up in here on this side. That way you can plug in is, uh, it should be like a USB charging port. You can plug in a cord if you want to charge your phone or GoPros or whatever. And then on this side over here, I made this switch panel. It's supposed to fit in here, but it doesn't fit in here. Unfortunately, it's super close, man. But when I welded this piece in, it sucked it tight right here. Same thing with this one on this side. And it made it just a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna have to remake this pan, but you can see how it's gonna work. This pan is gonna sink right in here and it's gonna have like all these switches in here, his live well timer. And this is gonna be like the hub. The, it's gonna control all the electronics in the boat besides like the fish finders and stuff. It's gonna be really cool when it's all said and done, but I've got to remake this pan. It's just not gonna fit the way it is. But you see this one is shallow. Can't even get the thing out of there. It's definitely too tight. But well, this is a shallow pan. It's only an inch and a half. And once I bring it out, you know, flush with the face of this, that's a half inch right there. And it's got, you know, three inches, three and a half, four inches inside of here. So his switches, they're gonna sit back about an inch and a half and then the wire is gonna come down from that. All those wires are gonna run back up here, back into this back bench seat and back to the battery. So it's gonna be sick. I'm gonna remake this pan tomorrow. We're gonna put this thing back in here and try to finish up this electrical hash to get it ready for paint. Let's get back to work. All right, so since I got to remake that pan right there, I'm about to change gears. Now I'm going to try to figure out the turf for this piece right here. I want to get this installed so I can finish that up, then I'll work my way back from there. So I just got up in the attic, and uh, it's cold up there. and There's not a lot of room up there, but I've got like four boxes of turf up there that are just like this one. I mean, they're just packed full of stuff. There's all kinds of different turf in here. So I'm gonna see if there's enough in here, hopefully to wrap that front compartment. I got this big sheet of gray right here. That's what I'm gonna try to use to turf inside of here, but it doesn't really matter what I put up inside of here because no one's ever gonna see this. So I'm gonna get at least this piece finished up. So I can go ahead and install that and that way I can work my way back from there. So let's see what we got inside of this box. It's looking like we got a bunch of gator turf in here. You might end up turfing this thing with gator turf. I mean, you got some Rasta camo in here. And this is only one box. Like, I literally have three other boxes of turf in there. They're all just like random cut sizes, drops and stuff that I save because I know I end up putting them into something somewhere down the line, but I don't know. I'm going to see what the biggest pieces I got in here are. That's a nice piece of two inch gray cut groove. I do like that turf too, that's pretty sick. I'm gonna see what I can come up with. I'll put you all back on the time lapse, I'm gonna figure something out and uh, we'll get that front compartment turf.
So I got my first piece of the rod locker installed. Now this recessed piece that goes up inside of this front deck, it's 24 inches long. And I turfed this with some gator camo, hydro turf, and the piece that's on the floor and the left wall, I got from Matt Strykel with SB Fishing TV. Now when he originally purchased his gambler boat, it came with this turf in it. And the guy gave him a bunch of extra turf the only kicker with it is that it did not come with a sticky bag. I used some 3M90 spray glue. Now this is the best bet if you're going to install turf that does not come with a sticky bag on it or if you're going to put carpet in your boot because it's very easy to remove yet it's very strong. Now the piece in the back and the piece on this right side, those were pieces that I had left over from the Punisher build, maybe even from the Grumman. I don't know. I've installed this turf in like three boats so it's very possible it could have came from multiple boats, but if you're going to get some turf, whether it's hydro turf, ortho deck, or C deck, whatever you want to go with, do yourself a favor and get the turf that has a 3M sticky back on it. It's well worth it. It's way easier to install. It's a lot cleaner and it's worth the extra money. But the way I installed this, I left like a three quarter inch lip on this side and on this side and down here in the floor. That way when I install this next piece of aluminum, this aluminum, it's like a channel. I'm gonna drop it right in here. I'm gonna squeeze it up underneath this. I can peel this up, drop it right under there, and it'll butt right up to where this turf is here and here on the sides. Then I can shoot my rivets in there. Then I'll be able to turf all that, and I can run that turf flush up here. It will basically hide this seam right here. It will make it to where there's nothing for your rods to get caught on or anything like that. Underneath of this piece of aluminum, I'm going to fill this with foam. I'm going to use that same exact foam I wrapped the live well with. It's like one inch closed cell foam. I'll stack as much in here as I can and into the side. I'm going to go ahead and get this next piece of aluminum installed in here. Let's get back to work. So as you can see, I got our second piece installed for our rod locker. This piece has a bunch of foam up underneath the bottom of it and a ton shoved in the side right here. It's tough. You can't push it up against the hole. It's got foam stacked in there tight. It's going to be perfect. And when I come back, I'm just going to run this turf right up here and butt it to these pieces on all three sides. And it's going to make this rod locker perfect. It's going to be exactly what you need. Now, I did have to hammer this thing in there because it was a tight fit. And it... It messed this lip up right here a little bit, but what I did was just smack it tight into each one of these corners, and then I smacked it down. And this piece that I have right here, the next piece, this thing's long. You can see how big it is. It's easily 24 inches, so it's going to be fine because it's going to overlap this piece about two inches because the rib is still about a half inch up underneath of this lip right here. So when I pull it up here, I'll have plenty of room to shoot some rivets in here. All this will be hidden. Obviously, I'm going to stack a bunch of foam down here in the floor, up underneath this live well, and up the side wall right here before I install this piece permanently. But before I do any of that, I really want to go ahead and install his battery cables that are going to run to his trolling motor. Now, I'm going to run them up in this side gunnel right here. All these well bolts have this big side gunnel that's perfect for running wires in. I'm going to run in here, go all the way up and all the way back. And I'm going to put that to where I can pull it up through the recessed foot pedal tray in here. I'll probably shove about four feet up inside of here. Then I'll run it all the way back down this gunnel and into this back bench seat. All the rest of the wires are going to come in from the foot pedal tray and run back through that side or from the back up. And they're all going to be installed into here in the hub of the boat, which is a switch panel. So I still got to remake that tray. I'm going to do that and figure out all the switches and stuff. But the reason I do that is because... I try to keep the battery cables, the big ones you use for your trolling motor separate because they cause interference and feedback and they need to be away and not touching or close to any other cables just to keep down on the interference. So they will be the only cables that are run on this side of the boat. 
And the reason I'm doing it on this side of the boat is because this trolling motor is going to be mounted on this side of the front of the bow right here. It's still going to deploy in the center, but it's going to be on this side. So it makes the most sense. It was electrical panel over there. Works out perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and get his battery cables ran all the way down this gunnel. I'll shove a bunch of foam in here. I'm going to pull this piece up and work my way back. And then I'll turf this entire rod locker. Let's get back to work. All right, so I hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to call this one here. And the boat is looking great. We made a lot of progress in this video. I've only got a little bit of stuff left to do on it. I'm gonna incorporate all that into a hyperlapse video and then take it to Billy and get it painted. And that's what you're gonna see in the next episode. You're not gonna see that until after first of the year because it's almost Christmas and New Year's and we got a lot of stuff going on right now. Also have another project that I'm working on, the jet boat. The thing is sick. It's like a 17 foot boat. It's got 180 horsepower Yamaha inboard motor in it. It's going to be quick. It's going to be elaborate. So there's another episode of that dropping very shortly. I already dropped one episode of that. And I'm going to try to get another video to you guys of like a wrap up of 2022 of the builds that I did. My favorite one. So go check out my last video of the jet boat build. I think it's going to be really cool. I think you guys will enjoy that. It's going to be a pretty good size series of episodes. And I'm going to knock that out pretty quick because I'm doing that at the shop. I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button and share and just help me grow the channel, guys. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you again before New Year's. Let's get back to work.